everyone, thanks for joining me on my YouTube channel. My name is Jason. I'm a certified health coach and I founded healthopsy.com. And today I would like to go over something that is really important to me. It affects my daily life. Um, it has created this, um, this new journey I've been on in the health and wellness space because of an antibiotic that I had taken a few years ago. And that antibiotic is ciprofloxin, which is a fluoroquinolone. So you may be wondering what that is, what are the symptoms? So if you have taken that antibiotic, you are seeing some side effects and that's the reason why you found my video. So some of those side effects range from muscle fatigue, tendon pain, um, depersonalization, nerve issues. Um, those are just some of the main ones. And today I'd like to go over some important things that I think will help you on your journey especially if you've just recently gotten floxed. Um, the term floxed is what we have coined for fluoroquinolone toxicity or fluoroquinolone syndrome, which is the side effects from the antibiotic. So today let's go over what you should do and what you shouldn't do if you've recently been floxed. So first off, let's go over things you shouldn't do. So first thing, not to take any more antibiotics. So if you're taking these antibiotics and you're having a side effect, you probably shouldn't be taking any more of them. You should discuss this with your doctor. I myself am not a doctor. Um, I'm just giving you a piece of advice that you should consult with your health practitioner and discuss what is right for you. I personally suggest not taking them if you have a side effect. Fluoride. Fluoroquinolones hence the name flora, has flora, fluoride in them. So fluoride is a neurotoxin, it's very bad for the body, and in copious amounts through these antibiotics, it builds up and builds up toxicity in your body. So therefore, get rid of fluoride. In your water, in your toothpaste, pretty much anything with fluoride, get it out of your system, get it out of your life, out of your household. Start reading labels on things so that you're aware of what items products have fluoride in them. Physical exertion. This is a big one. If you're having tendon pain, if you're having muscle pain, if you're weak, fatigue, do not physically exert yourself. Fluoroquinolone toxicity in itself is basically a mitochondrial dysfunction. Your cells are going haywire right now because of this antibiotic. So any kind of physical exertion is really gonna exacerbate your symptoms. So you wanna limit your physical exertion. Take it easy, talk to your doctor. That should be your primary first go-to things when you get a side effect from this antibiotic. So let's look at some other medications that have fluoride in them that you should stay away from. SSRIs, some steroids if not all steroids are fluorinated, so stay away from them. Ask your doctor if you're currently prescribed some sort of steroid. Have them look into the ingredients. Talk to your pharmacist. See if there's fluoride in them. You should probably start, stop taking them. There is an interaction between steroids, NSAIDs, and fluoroquinolones. So you want to be aware of that. You want to really, really, you know, look into what you're taking. Talk to your doctor. Ask him for the side effects between those two medications. Statins are also a big one. You want to stay away from statins. Going back to NSAIDs, NSAIDs sequester um, coenzyme A, which is um, a crucial part of the energy cycle in the mitochondria. So basically it just robs the cells of that. So you want to stay away from NSAIDs. There is a reaction between NSAIDs and fluoroquinolone. So you, you might want to stay away from those for a while. If not forever, um, try something different. There is herbal medication, uh, herbal, sorry, herbal supplements that can definitely help with pain. If not, Tylenol is, in my opinion, a safer route for pain medication. Chemicals. So basically your body's going haywire right now. You have mitochondrial dysfunction. Um, you are the canary in the coal mine. Your body is reacting to this antibiotic. So you want to get chemicals out of your body so that you're not taxing your body more. Chemicals in the household, being bleach, um, cleaning agents, all of these things are taxing your body. Your mitochondria usually in a normal healthy state can deal with these um, stressors, but under the conditions that you're going through right now, this is a bad idea. Let's, let's get those out of your house. Body products are another thing. If you look on your shampoo bottle, if there's like more than five ingredients that you can't pronounce, it shouldn't be going on your body. It's some chemical that you probably don't need to 
have running through your bloodstream um, when you're washing your body. Those chemicals do get into your body and it, it's your body's ability to get them out is really going to be hindered by the antibiotic. Let's look at stress. Stress is huge. Stress in daily life for the normal normal person is okay, but you're under a lot of stress. Your body is healing. It's repairing. It's, um, it's really trying to figure out what just happened. So having stress in your life, whether it's Facebook, family, friends, work, uh, it's hard to manage stress. Stress is natural. It's in everyday life, but try to manage it. Try to stay off Facebook groups that have all this negativity and really starting to scare you about what is happening to you. You, you just it, it can really be monitored and controlled, but it's up to you to do so. The fight or flight symptom comes into play here with your adrenal function. Like you really want to keep your stress to a minimum. I know it's scary. I know it can be hard, but let's just try to focus on getting you better by following some of these really easy steps that could really save you some time in your healing journey. So let's look at things that you could do right now that could really help assist you in your healing. So the first thing I really want to go over is to see a Phlox doctor. Somebody that knows about fluoroquinolone symptoms, toxicity and treatment, that should be your first thing to do so that they can really enlighten you more so than this video can to really help you on your healing path. Or a functional medicine doctor. These two doctors, some Phlox doctors are functional medicine doctors, but in my mind, functional medicine doctors look at the body as a whole. They are the best person to help you heal. Regular allopathic doctors, Western doctors um, that spend 15 minutes with you, give you a prescription medication and send you to a specialist, in my mind, aren't very good doctors. And it's shocking that they even have a medical degree. They're good for common colds and, and you know run-of-the-mill things, but you need a specialized doctor right now. That is um, a huge, huge thing you should look at first. Um, get, getting family support. You really want to get your family involved. If you have family that loves you and want to support you, get them involved. Have them support you. Um, have them just push you to get better. Bring you to doctor visits. Um, help you and, and, and hold you when you need to be held and embrace you through this process. Get blood work done. Blood work is tough because a lot of the blood work, standard blood tests, don't really target what fluoroquinolones do. My suggestion is get an organic acid test, SpectraCell, a NutraVal, all three of those will show you some of your um, vitamin mineral baselines, also mitochondrial function and um, your body's ability to fight off certain <clears throat> free radicals because of the ox oxidative stress from the fluoroquinolones. Um, hormone test is important um, and pretty much an adrenal test is a standard. Those three things should be looked at. The next thing is detoxing. So detoxing, what does that mean? Detoxing means getting rid of food items that can be stressors, um, detoxing chemicals from your environment and from your body care products. It also means using supplementation to detox some of the effects of fluoroquinolones and also using sauna, like an infrared sauna to sweat out some of the, you know, the, 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 chem the chemicals, the heavy metals and the things that the fluoroquinolones brought on. The next thing is mitochondrial supplements. That's a broad term, but anything you can find that will help your mitochondria, discuss this with the doctor you're working with, but you have a mitochondrial dysfunction because of this antibiotic. So you really, 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 really need to fix that first. That should be the first thing you should do is, is harnessing the power of the mitochondria to help the cells mitigate the damage from the fluoroquinolones. Some basic mitochondrial supplements are CoQ10, um, B vitamins, alpha lipoic acid, um, L-carnitine, acetyl L-carnitine, all of these assist the mitochondria to do what they have to do. The next thing we're gonna talk about is diet. So you basically put this antibiotic in and it kills bacteria. So there's good and bad bacteria in your stomach. So you're gonna really wanna replenish your gut with bacteria and then get rid of some of the parasites and um, bad bacteria through supplementation and a gut healing detoxing protocol to really fix the gut. And to not inflame the gut anymore, you really wanna get rid of things like gluten, dairy, and soy. All three of those 
actually inflame the gut. So you kind of want to get those out initially and then work with some sort of dietitian or practitioner that is well aware and knowledgeable of how to get um, diet individualized for you so that it is the best fit for you to lower your inflammation and get your gut rebuilt. The last thing I really want to focus on is positive mindset. Um, when I first got hit with this antibiotic, I had no idea. There was really none of the resources that are out there now. And there definitely wasn't really anyone like myself helping others to really enlighten them and help them on their journey with just tips and tricks to alleviate some of the stress, pain, um, unknowing, basically all this stuff that you really don't know what's going on. And that should be the first thing is just setting yourself up every day. Be thankful for your family. Be thankful for yourself. Be thankful to be alive and know that you're going to get through this. And just know that one day this will just be a chapter of your life. Um, you're going to learn a lot. It's going to be a process that um, you're really going to see who you are as a person. Um, it, it, does, it does definitely um, take a toll on your mind initially, but know that there is support out there and there is doctors that will help you on your journey. So if you guys have found this video helpful, it would really help me out if you would subscribe to my channel, hit the like button. I'm going to try to give you a video every week on something to do with health and wellness, some tip or trick that you can add into your life to help you feel better and really thrive in life. So again, my name is Jason from healthopsy.com. Thank you for watching. You can find me on Facebook or on our website, healthopsy.com. Thanks, guys.